everyone, so welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be on the Zoeva Retro Future palettes, and this is going to be the start of the reviews of these. I have four palettes in total from Zoeva that I will be reviewing, and these videos will have the review and a sort of tutorial to go along with it. So, I think we're going to go ahead and just to start with the review portion of it and then I will show you the tutorial for the look that I'm wearing today. So this is what the palette looks like. It's a nice sort of cardboard packaging and it's a beautiful purple shade and it has like this sort of retro design here. It says the retro future here. And then on the back it lists the ingredients and it says that it um, doesn't have any parabens, no mineral oil, no fragrances, and no phthalates. Superior pigmentation, easy to blend with vitamin E and made in Italy. I don't know if there's any truth to the sort of claim as Italian made uh, cosmetics and German made cosmetics are a lot better. In my experience um, with these palettes I do feel like the pigmentation is really great so they are very easy to blend. Um, the claim for being superior pigmentation I think that's true. Um, as far as the vitamin E I'm not sure but I do feel like this palette is very very pigmented. I feel like for what you're paying for it, it's very much worth it. So anyways, back to the packaging. It has just your standard cardboard packaging like so. When you open it up, it has that sort of um, design as well that matches the front. There isn't a mirror, so that would be the only thing that I would have to say. I wouldn't consider it a negative because I sit in front of a vanity mirror anyway, so it's not a big deal, but if you were someone who wanted to take this palette and to travel with, and you were, you know, maybe doing your makeup in front of the window at the hotel to get better lighting, because hotel lighting sucks, I know. Um, and maybe at that point you would need to have a sort of mirror here, but for me it's not a bad thing, but that may just be something that um, you might not like. So it's a noteworthy thing, there's no mirror there, so maybe, hopefully in the future they might. <laughs> um, so these are the shadows, these are the colors here. And each of the shadows are 0.05 ounces a piece or 1.5 grams. And you can see a nice range of colors. Um, you have a few mattes. They are a total of three mattes in this palette and then everything else is shimmery. That would be the only thing um, is that there isn't sort of like a mid-tone shade, like um, a tan or a brownish sort of color. There isn't one in this sort of... Um, color scheme I guess maybe because it's supposed to be the brighter colors like you have like this really beautiful um, lilac or lavender shade you have this bright purple this bright blue and a bit of like a spring green and then just some other sort of neutrally shades I would have liked to maybe have seen um, maybe take out this gray color and put in like I said, a matte sort of tan, so you have something there. But you can easily bring in one of your favorite matte tan shadows from whatever brand you choose. There's so many out there, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I do think that if they would have were to change something, I would say that. But overall, the pigmentation is very, very pigmented. And I'm just going to swatch the, some of the top for you first. And in no particular order, as you can see, those are some swatches there, and those are the first four. So um, this finger right here is a beautiful gold, but it's um, got a bit of an orangey tinge to it, and that one's called New Age. Then in the middle, this white is called Galaxy. It's a matte white, and look how intense that is. That is some serious pigmentation there. This one here, which is the one I'm wearing today, is called Super Vibe, which is a kind of goldeny spring green, and then. This one on my pinky is called Space Out, which is a soft taupe with a bit of champagne, which again is one I'm wearing on my lids. And then I'll just do the secondary swatches for you to see. That's going from my hand onto, or uh, my fingers onto the back of my hand. So they do have a lot of pigmentation. As you can see, some of these have a nice sort of metallic finish to them. I would say that a lot of them are sort of uh, metallic finish. Then another one that I really like, which I incorporated in this video, is called Rose Gold, and that's this um, sort of top shade here. And it's a definite rose gold. It's got like a beautiful sort of pink, and then it has a bit of a golden undertone or goldeny sheen. Very, very pigmented, and I've used a couple of these in the tutorial. I've dampened my brush, so you will see them apply dry and then how they go on wet. 
Um, they work really well either way. I don't feel like you have to wet them in order to get pigmentation to show up. Alright, so now talking about the bottom row, this one has um, a nice gray, a beautiful bright cobalt blue, a beautiful purple, which I've used before in a tutorial, a light lavender, and then um, this shade called Black Hole, which looks really dark and it's a nice black, but there is a little bit of sparkle to it. Um, it's not a silver sparkle, it's got different colors, so it's really, really pretty. And I'm just going to swatch them for you. This um, silver... Silver disc? Did I say silver? Did I say silver lining? I don't know. <laughs> silver disc is superior when it comes to the quality, the creaminess. It is very, very creamy. They're all creamy, but that one in particular is like butter. That one is just so, so great. So here are those colors. And I do like how all of these shades sort of go together really nicely. You can create a look with, with these four colors. And I'll do them on the back of my hand so that you can see what they look like as a secondary swatch. And you will be surprised at this bright blue. Now, let me, before I show you the swatch, people always say that mattes are difficult, and it's true. I feel like over the years, companies have gotten better at creating a nice matte formula that's not super dry, that doesn't crumble, and that has some payoff. And I feel like as we make our progress with changes in the cosmetic industry, I do feel like they're getting better. This matte here is very, very pigmented. Um, it's got a lot of pigment, so be forewarned that that color is very, very bold. It's very intense, and there it is. Look at that. And it goes on so smoothly. It's not patchy. It doesn't skip. It doesn't look weird. It just goes on so incredibly smooth, and that light, um, purple, this one's called Time Travel. It's just so freaking beautiful. I don't even, I don't even know. Like, I love these colors in the bottom row. They're beautiful. And then for Black Hole, um, it's that dark one, as you can see. When you swatch it, it, initially when you look at it, it has a bit of a silver look to it, but my camera probably will not capture the sort of dimensional, um, look to those glitters. So I'm going to try to take some photos with my macro lens and insert them for you so that you guys can see how beautiful this is. And then that's the black. And it because there's so much sparkle in that black, it doesn't look like a flat, intense, dark as night black. It looks a bit more of like a darker sort of charcoal black, so it's not super intense. Definitely wearable, can be used as liner, and it's just a stunner. All right, so those were the swatches. And before I give you my final thoughts and tell you whether it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial so you can see exactly how to recreate this look I'm wearing. Alright, so the first step in this look is to take the white eyeshadow from the palette or any sort of matte white shadow and apply that to the brow bone area. And I'm doing this first just because I don't want to get any of the super shimmery shadows that we're going to be using up too high. Um, so. You can use a skin tone color. You don't have to use white because it is a much more noticeable highlight. And then I'm going to take this brown from another Zoeva palette. It's like a yellowy brown color for my crease. And I'm just applying that with a fluffy crease brush. And as I said before, you will have to use some sort of brown transition shade or whatever crease color you want um, because this palette doesn't have those mid-tone transition shades. So just bring in your favorites. The next step is I'm applying this Paint Pot by MAC. This is new bile. It's been um, discontinued for a while, but um, just any, you don't have to do this step. I just chose to because I'm trying to use up some of my makeup, but it's not really essential to make these eyeshadows pop. I just chose to use it because, like I said, I'm trying to make my way through some of my products. Then I'm taking this color called Space Out, and this is sort of like a shimmery, champagne-y taupe color. That's going to be applied to the lid area. And when you're using a shimmer shadow like I am, uh, make sure you stay below the crease because you have that matte color. That brown that we put there is going to be our only crease color. Then I'm taking the color Rose Gold with a really small detailer brush. And I'm going to be applying this to the inner part of the eye. And then I'm also going to take it just 
up a little bit onto the uh, lid area as well just to meet up with that um, lid shade but this color is so beautiful and then I'm taking this spring green color in the palette and I'm going to be applying that with the same brush onto the lower lash line and we'll come back to this in a little bit but I'm just going to put down the first layer of color then I'm going back in with the same lid shade that I used earlier but my brush is a little bit damp with some eye drops and this is like a foiling technique so you can see how easily it goes on dry and how it goes on wet. Alright and so I'm trying to smooth out the edges of that color so I'm going to go back in with the same shade but dry on a very thin crease brush just to like I said soften the, the edges where it meets up with that um, tan shade. And then I'm going back in with the rose gold color. Again this brush has been dampened after applying the product to the brush with some eye drops just to intensify this. It's a totally optional stuff, you don't really have to do it, but it will make that inner corner really pop and make it super like golden-y, which I think is really cool, but it's up to you. Then I'm taking my eyeshadow brush and just sort of tapping it where they meet. And then I'm taking, again, the same method using the green with my brush that's been already dampened. So I'm going back in with that same brown that we used earlier and I'm touching up the crease um, with the same brush just a big fluffy brush applies a little bit more product and also diffuses it a bit then I'm going to be adding some eyeliner this is the gel liner by Essence it's like a dark gray one it didn't have a color name um, printed on the label and then I'm going to tight line my upper lashes with the NARS larger than life in Via Veneto and then I'm going to just apply some liquid liner this is the one from Stila I'll have it listed for you below. You can do a, a wing like I am, or you can just do your liner the way you feel most comfortable. Whatever makes you happy, do that. If you don't want to use the um, liquid, you can use a black eyeshadow. Here I'm taking the Corrupt Eyeshadow by Makeup Geek with an angled brush, and I'm just going to slowly just go over that liner. I know it's not a Zoeva product, but I wanted to slightly soften that just a touch because it is quite harsh wearing black liquid liner and I wanted just to kind of smoke out just the edges of it just I don't know to create a little bit of a smokiness and you'll see me apply the same color down to my lower lashes just so I can have a bit of smokiness so that it matches the upper lash line So all the eyeshadows are done all that's left of course is mascara you can do false eyelashes if you wanted to I'm totally skipping it and that's all you have to do to recreate this look all right so I hope that you guys love that look I really love the way it came out as you can see in the tutorial I applied the colors dry and then I dampened my brush so that the colors more more intense um, sort of like a foiling technique although they're super pigmented on their own when you wear them dry there is no need to do the whole wet thing but I did it just so that you guys can see it and just for me because it's something I've been doing a lot lately I don't know why I just am doing it and I like that whole technique and I think it's quite fun to sort of change up the finishes and intensify the colors that I already own so overall I do have to say that this palette is wonderful I do like the pigmentation um, I like the color options available and of course if you were just to get this palette you will have to supplement some of those sort of neutral shades like a flat matte black or a couple different shades of brown maybe a couple lighter sort of skin tone colors that are matte for highlighting you will have to bring those in in order to create um, an entire look um, as you saw in my tutorial I had to use one of the browns from another Zoeva palette just so I can keep it with the Zoeva theme but as you can see you will have to bring in some individual colors or other palettes to go along with this so this palette unfortunately on its own can not give me a sort of like completely well-rounded look so just keep that in mind overall I do feel like it's great I do recommend the palette I do like the colors they're really creamy and very pigmented and I hope that you like this uh, review let me know um, your thoughts if you've tried this or any of your um, feedback from the Zoya brand so that others can sort of experience that as well because I have loved everything that I have ordered and I've had these palettes for several months now and I've ordered some brushes as well which that review will come after I do the palettes so I love it two thumbs up in my book this is going to be one that I will be using very much um, in especially in the spring and summertime and I think that you're gonna like it if you decide to try it I will put the link to the Zoeva website down below it's not an affiliate link at all disclaimer um, I 
do have to warn you that when you go on the site, you have to convert the currency from um, euros to USD so that you can see how much US dollars you're actually going to be spending on this stuff um, so that you know it's not maybe like a surprise at the end. Um, so to convert everything over so that you can see on US dollars how much everything is. Um, and I will have the palette um, set because they come in all four together. They come in a, in a set. You can buy them individually and they also have a few new ones that recently came out. So I will link um, the set down below and then just the regular site link as well so that you can shop around and see whatever you want and then the set link will take you directly to these. So I hope that you guys like this review and tutorial. I will be doing another palette next. Um, let me know what you want to see, which palette next. Do you want to see Love is a Story, Rodeo Bell, or the Naturally Yours? Let me know which one you want to see next in the comment section so I can get working on that. And I will also um, link down any videos that I have using this palette or using any of the other ones um, as they coordinate with the video so that you can see other looks and not just what I'm wearing today. So thank you guys so much for joining me for this look and review. I hope that you enjoyed it. Have a fabulous day. If you would like to connect with me and chat on Twitter and Instagram, it's at Glamour by Lexi and I hope to connect with you there and have a great day. See you next time. Bye.